the six o'clock here on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University. The holiday season is upon us. No holiday for the football team is it? as the Braves got back in the win column, a big win over Texas Southern, as we talked about at the top. They're one win away from another trip to the SWAC championship game. Charles Edmond here, Jamario Brooks in Studio A. Larry Sanders here shooting it for us on the video end. Glad you can join us on the Alcorn Football Radio Network here at the flagship station. WPRL 91.7, WMIS, WTYJ in Natchez, WGDQ 93.1 in Hattiesburg, and V105.5 in Vicksburg. Good evening, Coach Hobson. Good evening, Charles. Congratulations. A good way to bounce back. It really was. We, we came out fast and put together a good 60-minute ball game. Well, let's get right to the highlights and give us a call, 601-877-6595. 601-877-6595. We'll get right to the questions. And because we had so many questions last week, we ask of anyone calling in to make your questions brief. We had calls beeping in even as we had calls on hold. So if you can keep your questions and comments brief, we can get as many questions and comments in throughout the course of the hour. We really appreciate it. All right, let's get to the highlights, uh, Jay Hobson. Uh, the Braves won the toss and deferred to the second half. Texas Southern started at their own 15-yard line. Quarterback, a little rollout and then check down. This is a catch, and it's a fumble. It's recovered by the Braves. He caught it in the air. That's why it's recovered. It never hit the ground. Derek Griffin was popped, and the Braves get a turnover to start this game. Well, they went to him right away, Cedric Tillman, and a turnover for the Braves defense. Talk about the challenge of covering that guy. You know, he's tall. He, he's an athletic receiver. I thought our DBs did a really good job uh, of covering him. It was a nice hit by DeAndre to uh, draw the ball loose, and uh, Eric was there to get it. And uh, big, big play, I thought, uh, for the most part, our corners and, and safety played well. Kind of set the tone. The forced fumble by Smith, as you mentioned, recovered by Eric Foster. So the Braves had it first and 10 from Texas Southern's 13. Footman, a gain of eight. Then after a loss of two, it was third down and four from Texas Southern seven. To the right, Putman rolling to the right. Here's a throw, it's a catch, touchdown. Jordan Payne from eight yards out. How did he catch that? Out on his fingers. That's a great hands catch. So the seventh touchdown of the year, not an easy catch. Jordan, uh, again, he's made many plays and nice. it was a nice uh, nice route by Jordan and he had a great snap. So the Braves with a seven to nothing lead right off the bat here. So the defense made the first statement. The offense got it going with the touchdown and Texas Southern's second drive started at their own seven and they went three and out. Here's the kick, it's blocked, touchdown! Marvin Ashley blocked it and recovered it in the end zone. Took it right off his foot. The Marvin big time play, um, certainly, and Marvin's just been a, he's been a, a great player for this year, of course, this year. Made a lot of plays on offense and now he's contributing heavily on special teams. Did you think he would be this good in terms of what he's done on punt returns and then with that block there? I did. I mean, Lamar was a young man that uh, uh, actually I signed at Memphis years ago and uh, he came down here to Alcorn to play with the Braves and he's just a talented young man that uh, just is a, a super kid and, and uh, certainly we're glad he's here. So it's a 14 nothing game with 12-20 left in the first quarter. The Braves' next drive started at their own 37 with 10-42 left in the first quarter. Lenore's Footman will keep it, and Footman dances to his left, and there's a check down. This is a catch down the sideline. Tim McKenzie inside the 40, the 30, to the 20, and written out of bounds. Talk about Tip McKenzie getting back into the lineup. Tip, uh, again, we, we, he, he's a playmaker, but Tip has been injured. Uh, he's been out for a few weeks, and uh, we got him back. And, uh, you know, when he gets in, Tip makes plays. Uh, big play early. Had another big play when he got he got a little banged up. But, uh, but uh, Tip is a guy that plays hard. He blocks hard. He runs hard. And, and uh, definitely is a really good football player for us. That was a 48-yard catch four plays later. Second down and goal from the one yard line of Texas Southern. Aaron Baker to the right of Footman. Ragsdale to the left, a little misdirection. Kept by Footman, touchdown. So Footman, the seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And Jay Hobson, you talk about a fast start. Doesn't get any faster. No, it was. We came, we came out fast. Good, good plays on defense, offense, and special teams. And all three phases were playing well. So it was 21 nothing at that point. The Braves' next drive started at Texas Southern's 39 yard line. 
after a bobble by Corey Carter, and then an incomplete pass. The drive stalled at Texas Southern's 19, so the Braves had to settle for a 36-yard field goal by Hayden McGraney. And this is from 36. Snap back ball now. Kick is up, and the kick is good. McGraney with his longest make of the year, 36 yards. And the Braves get three out of the deal, and they lead 24 to nothing. There's a flag. So there was a very opportunistic there in McRaney. His previous uh, long make was 29. Now it's 36. Right, nice kick by Hayden. Uh, good to get the three points. We actually had a uh, running into the kicker after that, but it didn't allow us to get a first down, so we decided to keep the points on the board. So uh, it was 24 to nothing, Jay Hobson, at the end of the first quarter. It really was. We, we, like I said, I thought we played well in all phases, and, and that was a good start. All right, we'll be taking your call, 601-877. 6595. We'll look at the second quarter highlights. You can uh, text a question and you can also email a question, football at allcorn.edu. We'll get to that. Your tweets and your phone calls, all that coming up after this one minute timeout. It's nine minutes after six o'clock and you're listening live to the Jay Hobson Radio Show. radio show on this Monday night. All right, Coach, let's look at the second quarter highlights. Corey Carter, the punter for Texas Southern, had a 64-yard punt. So as we start the second quarter, the Braves started at their own 16, and they were faced with a third down and five from their own 21. Lenore Flickman looks all the way, flushed out to the right, just a little check down. Catch McKenzie to the 40, fumbles the ball, still squirming around, and Texas Southern says they have it. And they do at midfield. All right, so Tip McKenzie trying to make a play right there. Yeah, and uh, just, you know, we talk about it, just got to hold it high and tight. And uh, good job by Texas Southern getting it out. So the Tigers take over at midfield with 13-21 left in the second quarter. Man, a second down and 10. Causey straight back to pass. Here comes pressure steps. That's going to lob this one for Griffin. And this ball is intercepted and hung up and was picked off as they target him for the fifth time, and Anthony Williams the third with the fourth Braves interception of the year. Jay Opson, just talk about his play. Only four picks, but he's been all over the field. Anthony played tremendous uh, Saturday. I, I thought uh, he certainly, DeAndre uh, was our player of the game, but Anthony could have easily been it too. I mean, he, he had a tremendous amount of plays. I thought he tackled well, he covered well, and um, just really made some difference maker plays out there. So with that pick, the Braves started at their own 10-yard line with 12.43 left, and they got the Texas Southern's nine, where it was a second down and seven. Here's Footman keeping it, turning it up the field, and Lenore's Footman, and he gets in for the touchdown. Footman from nine yards out in all kinds of traffic, and the Braves were up 30 to nothing with 7.57 left here in the first half. That, if I'm not mistaken, if I can remember, that might be the third drive that we've scored 90 yards, you know, 90-yard drive. You would know better than me, yeah. Charles. I yeah. have no idea. No and, idea. And we have these long fields, and that was a heck of a drive there. That was uh, 11 plays, 90 yards, 446 time of possession. It really was. Good, great job by the old Coach Kais and the staff. Did a tremendous job. I thought the offense was pretty crisp, pretty sharp. You know, everybody getting involved. Of course, Ragsdale the big day, and I, I thought... Footman solid. Yeah, they did. I, again, I thought uh, we blocked well, too, up front. Coach Stan Check and those guys did a tremendous job. So uh, just a, um, a nice all-around uh, effort by the We don't talk enough about the offensive line. I think we only were sacked seven times last year. I think we matched that. I think uh, we've been sacked seven times uh, after this game. But just talk about the 
play of the line with seven seconds. That's still great with two to play. Yeah, there's, uh, again, those guys are a, a veteran group that's uh, played a lot of football, and uh, they take pride in their work. And, uh, you know, we're certainly blessed to have them, and, and they're playing well. And, uh, you know, there's got a lot of senior leaders and junior leaders. You know, the good news is you got guys like D.D. and uh, some of those guys that, that will be back. You know, Jeff Reno will be back, and uh, some guys that – have stepped in and, and, and played a little little ball. Edric Thigpen's come in, you know. So just uh, again, but our seniors and, and they're just done a tremendous job for four years. So it's 31 to nothing at that point. Fast forward to 151 left in the first half. We had one timeout. Braves started at the Texas Southern 46 yard line, got to their 14, where it was third down and 12. Footman back to pass, flushed out to the right. Footman looks, throws, and it's deflected and caught. Touchdown. It was deflected. A TSU defender had it, but Brandon Vessel caught it for the touchdown. Well, when it's going, it's going, and a TSU uh, player had his hands on it, and uh, Brandon Vessel got it. Yeah, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Uh, again, we, we, Brandon was Johnny on the spot at the right time, right place, and uh, we'll take it. So at that point, Jay Hobson, it was 38 to nothing. You know, talk about your speech in the locker room. Well, we just knew we had to, uh, you know, 38 to nothing is never over. You know, we just knew we had to come out and, and come out and play hard in the second half. And uh, we were able to do that. I thought we came out pretty fast in the second half and got a couple scores. And that allowed us to uh, put some younger guys in and, uh, you know, rest some guys for this week. And uh, so that was uh, a blessing. 14 minutes after 6 o'clock, let's go to the phone lines. And once again, if you're calling in, because we had so many calls last week, we want to get everybody in as many as possible if you can keep your question and or comment brief. So let's go to the phone lines. Willie Jones, as always, calling in from Mobile. Good evening, Willie. Hi, you doing, Mr. Charles? Good evening. Uh, how are you doing, Coach Charles? Good, Willie. How's everything in Mobile? Oh, oh Coach, man. We won, so everything is good. <laughs> I understand, I understand that, really. I understand how you feel, man. Um, and um, I wasn't able to watch the game, but I I listened to the game with Mr. Charles and um, and um, I forgot his name, but uh, Mayor you know, Barnes. Mr. Barnes, y'all did a great job. Y'all did a great job. I really appreciate uh, it. Yeah, um, Coach, um, I wanted to say one thing or whatever. Okay. Um, the first ten minutes. I was like, this was, we couldn't have played a better first 10 or 12 minutes in the first, in the game, period. We, we couldn't have played. It, it was just unbelievable. Well, let, let that off or whatever. Okay. Well, I don't know if you are on social media or you read the blog. I or, do not. You know, uh, yeah, Charles knows me well. I'm, I'm oblivious to all of it. I, I got off about 12 years ago, Willie, so I don't read anything. And guess what? That's the way I like it, man. Oh, well, well, I understand that totally. But, uh, you know, it's been teams in our, you know, that conference, you know, um, including us. And it's probably about maybe four, maybe three or four teams are going to be looking for coaches coming, you know, after this whole thing, you know, uh, Jackson State, Texas Southern, UATB, and um, Alabama a and they're flirting with getting rid of you know, um, Coach Stady, which I have a lot of respect for him. You know, he's been, he, he, I mean, he's a great coach. But what I'm, back, you know, saying on the back burner. But what I'm saying is, it's rumors going around that um, the guy that you, you know, kind of took under his wing, Coach Streak, over there at uh, Prairie View, he's, you know, people are looking at him to take a job, uh, you know, because, you know, he's, you know, he's, you know, maybe the maybe the assistant coach of the year in the spring. Maybe, let's just say. Well, what advice would you have for him or any coach besides him, young coach, because he's not even forty years old? What kind of coach? Um, well, what kind of advice would you give to him or any young coach about taking the right job instead of taking the job and not being successful and taking the right job? and being successful and just being patient like you did because you were very patient, Coach. Like, you were just, you were too patient in my eyes. You were just too patient and you got the right job. And honestly, Coach, we love it. We love it and we hope you stay forever. But, you know, what would you tell a, a younger coach 
that go and take a job like a Jackson State or UATV, what kind of um, advice do you give him about taking the right job and putting you putting his stuff in the best situation to do? Well, first of all, Willie, I would be tickled, thrilled if uh, Ralph had that opportunity. Um, certainly, uh, he played for me at Marshall, and uh, I would be, um, you know, I would feel the same way I did when Willie took the Prairie View job. I, it would be well deserved, and I would be um, completely um, thrilled. You know, that's the way I am. I was kind of raised that way in coaching by a guy named Bob Pruitt, and. Uh, you know, the point is you, you want guys to uh, achieve to be, whether it's coordinators or, or head coaches, and, and, and you really do want them to get those opportunities. So I would be elated for him, and I would think it would be a well-deserved opportunity. And, uh, you know, and, and again, you know, in, in coaching, that's kind of what it's all about, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you work with people, you, you, you know, especially in a situation like Ralph who played for me, Again, you know, we, we know when we have to play each other, you know, certainly it's a it's a battle and each side wants to win. But aside from that, uh, all you do is wish them well and hope those opportunities come. And, again, I would be tickled to death and extremely proud for him. All right, man. Good luck against the um, team that I hate the most. All right, thanks, Willie, for calling. All right, Willie, we appreciate your call. We're going to take a time out here 19 minutes after. Give us a call, 601-877-6595. We'll take a one-minute break, and we'll look at the third quarter highlights when we come back on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. The university licenses will only use those products which reflect positively upon the university and are in keeping with the university's mission. The trademark and licensing of the Alcorn State University insignia was established to protect the Alcorn State University name and identifying marks. Trademark and licensing administration works to preserve and promote the university's longstanding reputation as a center of academic and athletic excellence. Merchandise vendors wishing to use the university's identifying marks on commercial products must be licensed vendors who have obtained permission to use Alcorn State University marks by securing trademark licenses. Campus organizations that want university identifying marks on their internal use products must hire licensed vendors to produce these items. To learn more about the licensing and trademark requirements, visit www.alcorn.edu slash trademark and licensing administration. All right, 20 minutes after 6 o'clock here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. It's Senior Day and Military Appreciation Day this Saturday as the Braves take on Alabama A&M. And um, it's always special. Your seniors playing their final home game, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So it should be a special time. Get your tickets for Senior Military Appreciation Day. It's a 2 o'clock kickoff from Spinks Kassam Stadium. The weather should be fine this weekend. It will be a rough weather tomorrow and Wednesday. But uh, once it all blows out, I think it will be pretty good on Saturday at 2 o'clock. We'll have the Alcorn pregame show at 1.30. All right, let's look at the third quarter highlights here. Coach Hobson, the Braves started at their own 20-yard line. Ragsdale for 12 yards, so it's uh, first down at the 32-yard line. Now here's Ragsdale up the middle. There it goes up the middle. Ragsdale's going to get a touchdown to the 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, 68 yards, no flag. That made it 45 to nothing. Nice play by Rag, you know, and he's been so close so many times this year. You know, it's, you know, I can't tell you how many times Charles I sit there. So I think he's gone. That, that last guy has just barely gotten him, and uh, he broke free. And, and uh, Rag does what he does best in those situations. Any difference in his style or his performance this year than last year? Of course, we all know he went down midway through, came back late. Any difference in his style this year? Yeah, last? I think it's been pretty much, uh, pretty much status quo with Rag. You know, you know, you're gonna get an honest, hard day's work every, every Saturday. So with that touchdown, it was 68 yards. It was 45 to nothing. Texas Southern got on the board. Jay Hobson on their next drive, seven plays, 85 yards. Darren Robinson with the touchdown. Just talk about Robinson. They really try to feed him. Yeah, he, he's uh, made a nice play, um, little screen play, and, and he's certainly a, uh, a good back. You know, I remember out of Knoxville when he was in high school and runs hard and a good little football player. 
so the PAT was blocked. It was 45-6 to six with 10.46 left in the third quarter. The Braves' next drive started at Texas Southern's 40 after a 37-yard kickoff return by Joe Price. And, of course, he was featured quite a bit in the second half. And you talk about a guy that just really wants it and a guy that you know pretty well. And then just talk about Joe Price. Joe, uh, I thought, came in and ran the ball extremely well. You know, he ran hard, uh, uh, had a nice kickoff return uh, early in the game, uh, the second quarter or third quarter. And, uh, you know, Joe, Joe has that uh, breakaway speed. You know, if he gets loose, he can make you pay. You know, we're, we're a football team that has quite a bit of talent in that running back spot, you know, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, you wish there were more balls to go around sometimes, you're just not, but Joe's a young man that I'm so proud of, he, he's, he's worked hard, and, and uh, he's uh, he's fighting every Saturday and, and uh, doing a great job for us. I was kind of wondering about Joe Price, you know, when he got hurt last year, you wondered, is he going to be able to stay with it, and I know it's hard because he had so many backs in front of him. But, uh, you know, just talk about his intuitiveness, just trying to stay with this thing. Well, that's what I'm just so proud of with Joe. Joe, uh, Joe's headed off for great things, and, and uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, I've kind of watched since uh, as a young child grow into a man, you know, and, and um, that's probably the thing that I'm the most proud of with Joe. And, and uh, again, uh, Joe's really shown me a lot of, of like you'd say, stick to itness and, and uh, toughness, and uh, just really proud of him. And he played really hard uh, Saturday. And he had that 37-yard uh, kickoff return, so the Braves were in good shape. Footman and Warford, uh, 11 and 20 yards respectively. We got to Texas Southern's five-yard line, where it was third down and goal from Texas Southern's two. Goal from the two. Here is Baker, straight That's ahead, straight. and he's in. Straight. Touchdown. So Aaron Baker, you know, again, he's getting all ribbed up here down the stretch. Yeah, Aaron is, and Aaron, you know, he, he's, he's tough back to tackle and uh, running the ball hard, and he's made some really big plays the last couple weeks. So it's 51-6 to at that point. Texas Southern started their next drive after that all-corn score at their 26, with 5.51 left in the third quarter. It was a middle screen by Robinson, their 62 yards. And uh, Homer Causey was in on that drive as well, and was 51 to 13 at the end of three. Yeah, it's a uh, nice, you know, nice score. It's always fun to go into the fourth quarter with that with that big a lead, and we were fortunate to get some guys some playing time, and uh, got T.J. Johnson in in the fourth quarter. And what a good little athlete T.J. T.J. is going to be a really great football player here, a talented young man that can play so many different things. But uh, T.J. came in and. and uh, did a great job for us and, and uh, you know, got a chance to watch some younger guys, get some younger linemen in the game. Uh, you know, we got quite a few young linemen that we think are going to really be excellent football players. So uh, good to see that and uh, got, a, got a few young DBs in. LaShawn Ely made a big hit on special teams and did a few things back there. So good to see him contributing. We've had quite a few games in which there's been lopsided scores. But, you know, what, I know you want to see the, the effort and energy despite what do you what do you tell the twos and threes when it's their turn? Well, you, you want to keep it going. You know, you don't want to see a letdown. And uh, that's something that I was really uh, pleased with in the fourth quarter. I thought uh, our twos and threes on, on both sides of the ball played well. When you look at Texas Southern's defense, I mean, we scored a bunch of points, but you, you see Texas Southern defensively. You know, as you looked at them on film, what, what challenges did you see as you prepared for them on the defensive side? We know what their, we knew what their quarterbacks were going to do, even though Homer Causey played the majority, and Homer Causey was a DB. Remember, two years ago, he was their quarterback. Well, actually, he was their DB until this week. And, yeah. And we, we actually saw him warming up at quarterback, uh, going out in stretch, and I said, well, it looks like in, in 18, was actually uh, not dressed for the game. And so, uh, so it looks like he's uh, being called back into action because uh, I guess 18 was hurt or uh, had an injury. And so, uh, and of course, uh, we we really remember uh, Homer because he had a really good game two, two years ago, yeah. you know, and uh, we barely got out of there with a W that year. And so um, we, knew, um, we knew we had an athlete uh, coming in at quarterback. When you look at Texas Southern's defense, you know, we scored a bunch of points. What what challenge did, did you think that they would pose for you going into the game? Well, they really have some talented players. You know, they're, they're fast, they're long. Um, so, you know, just athletically, uh, 
we thought they were a really athletic football team, and that was something that uh, always concerns you um, when you play a team that's long and athletic. So we'll look at the fourth quarter when we come back in one minute. At 628, the Jay Hobson Radio Show will return in 60 seconds on the All Corn Football Radio Network. Old Corn State University is a great place to receive a great education, and here's why. Old Corn is ranked as a top university in the top schools' regional universities in the South Category of the U.S. News and World Report Best Colleges Rankings. There are other great reasons to choose Old Corn State University. Whether it's personal, whether it's in education, anywhere you turn, there's always a helping hand. If they want to be challenged to learn and grow and be in an environment that is nurturing, a place where they're not just a number, where people know you by name, then I would tell them to come to Alcorn. For more information, call toll-free 1-800-222-6790 or visit us on the web at www.alcorn.edu. You are tuned in to WPRL 91.7 FM, broadcasting from the campus of Alcorn State University. And welcome back to the Jay Hobson Radio Show on this Monday night as we approach the bottom of the hour. One reminder, the GV Sunny Montgomery VA Medical Center's Rural Health Outreach Team will set up a mobile health clinic to provide health care services and enrollment information to eligible veterans in the area November 18th from 10.30 in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon here on the Mormon campus. Eligibility determination, registration, enrollment, my health vet physical exams, patient education, vet center benefit information, female veterans information, and etc. Please bring your DD-214 card. For more information, call Tracy Smith, Veteran Affairs at All Corn at 601-877-6170 or Belinda Chambers, Okafer, VA Medical Center Director at 601-362-4471 extension 3998. We approach the bottom of the hour. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Jay Hobson Radio Show on the All Corn Football Radio Network. Tune in to WPRL 91.7 FM, broadcasting from the campus of Alcorn State University. Halfway through the Jay Hobson radio show here on this Monday night, let's go back to the phone lines. Keisha calling us from Houston, ran into Keisha as soon as we got into the hotel Friday. It's always a pleasure to see Keisha. Good evening. Good evening. How are you all today? Hey, Keisha. How are you doing? I just wanted to call in and say how good it was to see everybody this weekend. Um, I enjoyed spending a little time with the guys and catching up with them. Um, Wishing everyone well this Saturday. I know it's a crucial game. Well, every game is a crucial game, but we know what's at stake, and I'm just hoping that everybody's prepared, mind, body, soul, and we're ready to go out and get the win. Thanks, Keisha. I want to thank you and and tell the... uh, Houston alumni chapter, thank you so much for coming by the hotel and uh, and uh, giving the guys the snacks. They really appreciated it. It was my, I mean, it's like I can't be at all the games, so I just feel like whenever our team comes anywhere near me, it's almost like we're obligated to do that. I mean, that's the least we can do. Well, thank you so much. Believe um, me, it's much appreciated. You're more than welcome, and I'll see you all Saturday. Okay, Keisha. All right, Keisha, calling us from Houston. Of course, the Houston alumni, the Atlanta alumni, just that feeling, that spirit. Talk about that as you arrive in these big cities and are met with just great support. We have such a great alumni base, and, and uh, really it's just uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous alumni that really uh, play such a major role in uh, Alcorn football and Alcorn athletics, you know, and uh, let's face it, there's so many things that they get done for our athletic programs that uh, that goes above and beyond Call of Duty. Yeah, and just the behind the scenes, I mean, what, you know, the stuff that they do is just absolutely incredible to me. It really is. Uh, let's look at the fourth quarter. As the Braves started at Texas Southern 17-yard line, Joe Price with six carries on that drive, and uh, the Braves had it from Texas Southern's four-yard line. Here's Price turning it back in, and he scores! Joe Price from four yards out. So that was a 12-play, 71-yard drive. 11 of the 12 plays, the runs by Joe Price on that drive. So that made it 58-13 to with 11.23 left in the fourth quarter. 
Texas Southern's next drive started at their own 30-yard line with 11-11 left, and they were faced with a third down and 12. Be good shape until the Magic City. Oh, Bowen yeah. flushed out, check down to Robinson. It's going to be wrapped up. That's a fun Ball one. is loose. Braves get it, and the Braves are going to score. Touchdown. Yep. Knocked it loose from him, and no, it was three of us on him. He had no help, no way to get up. We just walked it in. Wow. The defense comes up with the second turnover of the game, and that's uh, Michael Lester, 46, with the fumble recovery. Cedric Tillman, the defense with a couple of big turnovers. So talk about that. You know, just trail a big play, and, and uh, you know, that's always good to create some turnovers on, on the defensive side, and that's something that uh, we try to do. Okay, so you talked about it in the last segment. Darius Dean got some action in the backfield. Right. And our number three quarterback, that's kind of been the question that a lot of folks have been asking. We know about Gibbs. We know about Footman. Who's the number three? Well, actually, DeAndre Pickett-White is probably right now that list of it. Noah Johnson is another young man and Ramon Atkins is really we have three number threes if you want to be quite honest uh, with it uh, hopefully we're able to uh, red shirt uh, all three of those young men you know and that's kind of something that we're, we're trying to do if at all possible and uh, but uh, we're certainly excited about it it'll be a fun battle to watch you know because uh, right now DeAndre is, is the guy that's taking the reps but that's probably you know, you, they're young right now, so you just don't know in time. You know, it's, it's, it'll, be, it'll be a fun spring, you know, to see um, if that battle uh, comes out. But right now, DeAndre will be, is listed as our three, and uh, he would be, you know, if it was a game time uh, decision where we had to play him, it would be DeAndre. But uh, we're going to try not to unless we have to. So the Braves win going away 65 to 13. We're going to take a one minute break and we'll break down the numbers for you. We'll have the SWAC report, the standings. We'll have some all corn news featuring Ray, the late Steve McNair. We'll get to that, the scores, and we'll preview Alabama A&M. We'll get to all that coming up in one minute on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. WPRL 91.7 FM has always tried to stay one step ahead of the curve, and we've done it again with a new and improved website, WPRL.org. It's got all the latest in national and local news, as well as your favorite WPRL shows and personalities. From these worthy-to-be-praised gospel program with Jay Miles to Jazzy Jazz, R&B with Jamario Brooks, student shows, and of course, all of your Alcorn State University sports broadcasts. You can listen to WPRL.org from your cell phone or tablet, Android or Apple. Just go to TuneIn Radio and type in Life 91.7 WPRL in the search box. Anytime, anywhere, any source, desktop, laptop, cell phone or tablet, WPRL has you covered. For more information, call 601-877-6290. All of this from 91.7 WPRL and on WPRL.org. All right, welcome back to the Jay Hobson Radio Show. 36 minutes after 6 o'clock. Don't forget, folks, it's the last home football game of the season as the Braves take on Alabama A&M. I'll well, check you out at Sphinx Castle Stadium. If you can't make it, the game will be streamed live online by going to allcornsports.com and click on Game Day Central. You'll be able to watch the game for a small fee. That's allcornsports.com and go to Game Day Central. If you can't make it to the ball game, we'll have it for you streamed online. All right, let's look at the final numbers. Jay Hobson has the Braves with 65 points in the ball game and 519 yards of total offense led by Marion Ragsdale. Very productive, nine carries for a buck 15. A big game by Rag, nice big run. He ran hard all day. A Norris Footman, 16 carries, 83 yards. I mean, he had what, over 500 yards in his previous two games. Effective, two rushing touchdowns, 83 yards. Right, so that puts the Norris where close to 600 and over 600. Over 600 yeah. in three games, so that's. It's not bad, um, not bad numbers by the Norris. Joe Price, 74 yards. You talked about him. Aaron Baker with the touchdown, nine, about five carries for 16 yards. And Darius Dean, three carries for eight yards. Throwing the football, the Norris Footman, 11 of 18 for 185 yards. 
and two touchdowns. Talk about how he was able to sling it around. Lenoris, again, we, we've talked a lot about uh, his rushing ability, but Lenoris is <laughs> he's probably a better thrower than runner. I mean, he, he can uh, he can really thing it. So uh, again, he's he's done a tremendous job for us. And like I said earlier, and I'll continue to say, we're really blessed to have two great quarterbacks and, and uh, both young men have been tremendous players at Alcorn, and we're certainly appreciative of everything they've done here. In the red zone, we were 7 of 8. That's good numbers there, Charles. That's what you want to be. So you look at the time of possession, um, you look at the time of possession in the fourth quarter, 10.42 to 4.18 in the fourth quarter. I thought we did a pretty good job in dominating the time of possession as well in terms of being efficient, the dinks and dunks, and just being effective there. And no question. Uh, we did a good job. And again, it was... Good to see. I really was really pleased in the fourth quarter of some of the young guys coming in. I thought they, they played well, blocked well, ran well. I thought we flew around, tackled well, so good to see. Receiving Marquise Warford, six receptions for 79 yards. We talked about McKenzie, two receptions for 77 yards. And then Brandon Vessel always seems to get a reception or two, and he had that deflected ball for one reception for 14 yards and a touchdown. All the receivers, you know, Brandon Vessel, we talked about him starting out here as a quarterback, has transformed nicely into a receiver. He makes the big catches when you need him. Brandon does, and Brandon uh, is really, a, a, again, such a solid leader for us and players. And we, we got, we're loaded uh, uh, at that area, too. You know, we have a lot of receivers that, uh, we have a lot of seniors at that position, too, that will be graduating. But we do have some guys like Charles Hughes and, and you know, coming back, Tips coming back, Marquise is coming back. So we got we got some guys coming back that, that are big time playmakers too. So, uh, but again, we got a uh, you know that's one of those positions I think that we definitely have. You know, you wish you had another football at times to get it to some more guys. And Jordan Payne only one reception for that uh, seven yard touchdown. Yeah, Jordan again has uh, been such a great player for us and done so much, so many good things, not only receiving but blocking and. Um, just was our captain at the game, did a tremendous job of that. Defensively, we held Texas Southern to 236 yards of total offense. And the big story, Derek Griffin, we knew about him coming in, and they targeted him probably 10 times in the game. He had five receptions for 46 yards, Robinson three for 64. Um, their quarterback, Omar Causey, 9 of 15 for 114 yards. Bowen, 4 of 9 for 70 yards for Texas Southern. Defensively, leading the way for the Braves, Darian Anderson with seven tackles. Uh, Darian uh, it, you know, is a physical backer and, and tackles well. And, and he was a swag player of the week a few weeks ago and just really had a great season. Anthony Williams, the third, six tackles, and he had a big uh, he had a big return there. He did. I thought I thought Anthony played a great game, uh, really in all phases, but uh, he really played played outstanding. Then Deion McNair with four tackles, Michael Hearns with four tackles. You talked about Ben Brooks and uh, looking at Ben Brooks out there to start. I mean, he's made some plays. He has, and, and Ben is now uh, getting completely healthy at the right time. You know, it's uh, he. If you remember in 2013, he uh, started playing almost kind of alternating as a starter for us late in the season in 13. It was right in the eighth game of the season, ninth game of the season. He played great. He, uh, he had a couple games at the end of the year. I think we finished with Prairie View and Jackson that year, and he had, he had two outstanding football games. And going into 14, he was listed really as a starter. And uh, about the third week, third day of practice, two days, he uh, tore his ACL and MCL. And so he was, he had to miss the, uh, the 14 season. And uh, it's been a little bit longer than normal rehab for men. And it's taking him a little bit longer, but now he's back up to full speed and he's uh, healthy and just in the right time. What is his upside? You know, Ben is a very uh, instinctive uh, and very smart. You know, Ben can play every position back there. You could put Ben at nickel, corner, or safety, and that and that sounds uh, you know easy. Oh, he's an athlete; he can do it. But that's really hard. And so he, he Ben is a very smart young man that that uh, just can. You know, we really hurt us in 14 when we lost him because it was almost like we lost a, not only a starter but a two at a couple of other spots because now you had to develop some guys and, and it really hurt. Middle of the season to late in 14, we were getting a little bit worried there. Um, and 
losing him was was an, uh, really a big hit for us. But uh, he's a young man that's uh, certainly a, a you know a gritty kid. Has battled back from the injury. Smart young man that uh, uh, again played really well for us uh, Saturday. And then Quentin Cantu, I thought, had a gritty, you know, gritty performance out on that island. He did, too, too, playing hard, too, as a competitor, sir, and, you know, he's, he's going to bring it every Saturday. All right, 43 minutes after, we're going to go back to the phone line. Cedric Foster calling in. Good evening, Cedric. Hey, uh, good afternoon or good evening. Hey, this good evening, Cedric Foster. Sid. I'm calling from, from Tallahassee. I just want to say this, Coach, uh, you and your staff is doing a fantastic job. I'm, I'm just so... These last three or four years, I've just been tickled pink. Thanks, um, you know how the program is, is coming along. Um, I, you know, I, I did get a chance to see the team in, you know, in Baton Rouge in the rain. Uh, and uh, we appreciate and you thought, sitting that one out for you. Not, 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 not too many uh, hung out for that game. You had about 15 people. That's thunderstorm. Well, well, coach, we drove from uh, Tallahassee, and uh, and and my wife. You know, we both finished in 72, 73. And uh, my wife, she say, I love I, I love my school, but I can't sit out in this rain. That's, right. that, you know, that's what my wife, she actually sat out on that one. She said, you all know I love you. You sit down on this one. I, I, I said, look, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I, I, uh, ho hopefully, I, I think I heard you say this earlier, that um, it, it seems to me that the uh, Look like you got some good prospects for next year, uh, and uh, and and I'm thinking uh, I I think I heard you say uh, you and Charles say this that you're going to be playing in the uh, Swack Neck uh, Challenge in Orlando next next season. I'm getting excited about that too, and I definitely that's be correct. down for that. That's correct. Uh -huh. We're open yeah. up. Okay. All right, hey coach, continue. To do what you do and go brave. Thanks, Cedric. Appreciate it. All right, Cedric Foster, we appreciate you calling in here, as well as Keisha and Willie Jones, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back here on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Get ready, ASU and surrounding areas, as the Alcorn State University Extension Program hosts the Extension This Week radio show. Extension This Week will offer weekly highlights of Extension's current and future programs, events, and activities. It will also offer important information in areas such as community gardening, health and fitness, and community resource development. We will air live from the reservation every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m., hosted by 4-H Youth Specialist, Ms. Manola Irby. So tune in to WPRL 91.7 FM Allcorn Public Radio, or you can also listen on the web at www.wprl.org. All right, 46 minutes after the hour, our producer Jamario Brooks, Charles Edmond, head coach Jay Hobson. Coach, it was a pretty good uh, last four days. You know, we opened up basketball season on this past Thursday. Our uh, men and women opened up against Tougaloo as uh, Courtney Pruitt and the Lady Braves opened up with a victory. And I'm going to tell you something. The game Thursday night here with Tougaloo, 122-117, and I, I said it, and I'm, I said it before, that might be one, one of the games of the year in college basketball. I mean, that was a terrific game, and it looked like uh, the Braves were going to win in regulation, a 26-footer with about seven seconds left. Tougaloo said it in overtime. It looked like Tougaloo was going to win it in the first, first OT, and we make shots, and then they just kind of ran out of gas, 122-117 in one of the best uh, games that I've seen in a while. That's right. We're going to call you out of retirement out there and get, get you <laughs> there, Charles. But uh, coach, the both coaches have done a tremendous job, and congratulations on the wins and just pulling them on here as they hit the road for a little stretch. We talked about the men's team is going for a little stretch out west and uh, for a few games and certainly wishing them well from the reservation. hope they uh, get some Ws. And, can't wait to when this our season slows down to get in the gym and, and watch some games. Yeah, are you a big basketball fan overall? You know, I, yeah, I am. I am. I probably I'm not just I'm nothing but a probably a football guy as far as huge fan, but I do basketball is probably number two. You know, just watching it and uh, certainly uh, uh, was a uh, 
very average uh, point guard in, in high school, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, I, I enjoyed basketball. I really did. And, uh, but uh, you know, I'm jack of all trades. Charles, a master of none. Tell me about it. Um, and of course, the Lady Braves are playing East Carolina tomorrow. You talked about it. The men have about a two and a half week road trip coming up. Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, uh, UTEP. Uh, Grand Canyon University, that's in Arizona. They go to Portland, then they play Indiana, the Hoosiers in Bloomington. So about a two and a half a week road trip. The Lady Braves play East Carolina on the road. And then I'll be with them next Tuesday as they will play Central Arkansas and Conway, Arkansas. That's a 5.30 game next Tuesday, so I'll be there to bring you Lady Braves basketball. So continued success to the basketball teams. We do have a home game in December, um, a, a men's home game. And then another men's home game coming up after Christmas before conference play starts in Houston, by the way, against Texas Southern and Prairie View. Other news involving uh, Alcorn Athletics, legendary Alcorn alum, the late Steve McNair will be recognized for his achievements on the football field. And the late Steve McNair is among 10 athletes who will be inducted into the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame at his 50th anniversary induction banquet Saturday, June 18th, 2016 at the Omni in Nashville. And of course, Steve McNair, the late Steve McNair and I walked on this campus around the same time. You know, what, what are your thoughts, Coach, uh, about, you know, the late, great Steve McNair, two SWAC championships in four years, 92 and 94, two playoff appearances, uh, Northeast Louisiana, now Louisiana Monroe and Youngstown State. You know, what are your memories of Steve McNair? You know, the thing with Steve, you would have to say, and, and of course, I'm blessed to have Fred on the staff, his, yeah. his older brother. But, uh, you know, in college football, there's been so many great players in Mississippi, but in college football, he may be the greatest player in the history of Mississippi. And that's saying something in college football. We all know guys, you know, Jerry Rice has gone on to the NFL, and, and you know, it, and of course, Steve was the NFL MVP, so, you know, and he's a future Hall of Famer. But, but, you know, we know the guys like Walter Payton and Jerry Wright, some of those guys, even Brett Favre, that have tremendous uh, Archie Mannings. And, and, but in college football, to do some of the things that Steve McNair did was just truly amazing. And, you know, that's one of the things we tell young men when we're recruiting is, you know, because sometimes, you know, we, we'll go into homes and, you know, and. You know, the SEC is that conference that so many guys look at. And, you know, one thing, I'm, I'm very open and honest. I'm saying if that's your dream, you know, that's so be it. But just know this, the highest finish in the history in the state of Mississippi for Heisman Trophy balloting is Steve McNair. And he played at Alcorn State University. And so he didn't play at Ole Miss, didn't play at Mississippi State, didn't play at Southern Miss. So at the end of the day, uh, that's saying something. You know, when, when you have that big a talent, that uh, is the highest finish in the history of college football in the state of Mississippi. I think Archie tied in at three, but they're the two highest finishes in the history of college football. So you can't say enough about a guy like Steve there. You just can't, you can't put it into words uh, what he did. And, you know, Steve was offered by LSU. And I'm Fred and Tim McNair, that love and Tim told me the story of what he told Steve and then the recruiting. But, LSU and Alabama and Ole Miss and Mississippi State, everybody had offered Steve. And, uh, you know, and, and Tim, uh, I think, uh, and I can maybe need to get Fred on here to make sure I'm right, but I can remember Tim saying, hey, baby brother, it doesn't matter where you go, it's what you do when you get there that counts. Yep. And so uh, at the end of the day, Steve proved it uh, right and came to Alcorn State, and the rest is history. You know, when it, and, and that's that's the thing we talk about and I talk about with, with folks on, when they try to recruit and, and all this other stuff that goes on, if you're good at what you do, you you will be noticed. No question. When we have all 32 teams, NFL teams, come out and watch our guys practice, so at the end of the day, you're getting recognized. They're coming to watch you uh, play, and so you're gonna you're gonna you know that you're getting the games. You're, you they're coming out to practice, so you're getting uh, you're getting the guys here. So that's a good thing. Now it's really what you put on that film. You know, it's something we talk to our guys about, you know, and, and, and that's the reality of it. We were blessed last year. We got three in camp. Uh, hopefully we'll get a few more in camp this year. And, and um, just part of that journey is we just continue to grow. The one story that I keep hearing time and time again, you know, players want to come to a SWAC school or Alcorn and, 
and you know when they pass that up they, they think they're going to a bigger school and starting and then they wind up third or fourth on the depth chart when they could possibly come here and make an impact right away well you know you we're secretly hunting those guys that can go to those schools and, and play if they, you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day yeah i mean you you have to always in recruiting you have to make a decision that's right for you and, and each each person in each situation is different. You know, what what might be right for one guy is not necessarily right for the other guy. And I think that's what's important. You have to go uh, to a place that makes you happy, uh, that uh, you enjoy the environment. And, uh, you know, when you do that, uh, you're not going to choose the wrong school. And uh, so, you know, one thing I've said in recruiting, and I believe it, and one thing I've, I want guys here that want to be all corner state Braves. You know, I don't, I don't want to recruit anyone that says, oh, well, I went to Alcorn. I want, I want guys to be bright-eyed saying, man, I can't wait to go to Alcorn. And, and this is the best university in the country. And I, I want guys to, with that enthusiasm and that excitement, uh, because, you know, that, to me, those guys are the guys that are going to love the university. They're going to play hard for the university. They want to be here. And, uh, you know, I'm from here. I'm from Vicksburg, born and raised. So I want guys that want to be here. I want to be here. And uh, that's something that uh, is, you know, important to me. And we've seen guys like Joe Price and Warford, you know, play at that bigger level, and they come here, and wow, the impact they make. Right. And, you know, and a guy like Marquise was a great player, you know, at, at that level. You know, he, he rushed for, I guess at Memphis, he rushed for 250 yards against Arkansas State one night. So, I mean, he was an impact player on that level. And we're fortunate enough to have him here at Alcorn State be an impact player for us. All right, 54 minutes after the hour, we'll take a timeout and we'll turn our attention to Alabama A&M and an opportunity for the Braves to punch their ticket to Houston. We'll be back in one minute on the Jay Hobson Radio Show. If you're a business owner and are looking to promote your product, look no further than to Alcorn State University Athletics Marketing and Advertising. A great way to get the word out. Whether it's on pocket schedule cards, whether it's radio advertising on the Alcorn Sports Radio Network, whether it's online, whether it's website advertising on alcornsports.com, signage at the various athletic venues, as well as game sponsorship opportunities. Athletics has it all. For more information, call Athletics Director Derek Horn at 601-877-6500 or Larry Smith at 601 601- 877-2413. Great sponsorship packages are available. That's all Corn State University Athletics Marketing and Advertising. For more information, call Derek Horn at 601-877-6500 or Larry Smith at 601-877-2413. All right, 55 minutes after the hour as we wind down the Jay Hobson Radio Show. Don't forget, folks, next week it's all corn at Jackson State in Jackson. Several hotels providing some pretty good rates, including the Cabot Lodge. Millsaps, 2375 North State Street, 601-948-8650. For more information there, the Hilton Garden Inn, Jackson Downtown, 235 West Capitol Street. You can uh, use the group code ASU alumni for a reservation, 601-353-5464. The Hilton Jackson on County Line Road, as well as the Jackson Marriott, located at 200 East Amid Street. You can use the group code ALCALCA. So plenty of hotels to give you some pretty good rates. All right, uh, as we look ahead to Alabama A&M, Jay Hobson, this team, what, three weeks ago, they kind of had the East in their sights. And then they lost in the Magic City to Alabama State, 35-20. to 20. Then they dropped an overtime game to Valley, and that was it. You know, they were pretty much done as far as winning the East was concerned. And then they lost to Southern, 46-7. to 7. This is a wounded team coming in here looking for some positive things to happen. So as you look at this team, Coach, what can we expect? Well... This is a, a football team that is an athletic football team, a well-coached football team, and a, again, a, a football team that's going to get our utmost respect. Um, we understand, um, you know, hey, we were in this situation two years ago with Alabama A&M uh, coming into town, so uh, we understand uh, we got to have a great week of practice, great week of focus. Uh, we've got to bring our A game. For us, it, it is a a SWAC East championship football game. That's what it is. You know, we, we've got a championship game in Ormond on Saturday. So, uh, you know, 
I don't know when the last one was, probably when Steve was here, the last championship football game in Norman was probably 20 years ago. So we have an opportunity to have a SWAC championship game here in town, and uh, we've got to be ready to play. And you look at the standings, and it's pretty obvious what has to happen going forward. The Braves are 5-2. and two. Bama State done in conference. They're 5-4. and four. Jackson State 3-4. and four. The formula is simple. You win Saturday. The Braves go to Houston. The only team that can catch all corn is Jackson State, and that would be in a three-team tiebreak, and I don't want to even get into that. I have the tiebreaker in front of me, and I don't even want to get that far. I don't think we'll need it, but I do have it. Jackson State still has an outside chance if the Braves lose out and Jackson wins out. It's a three-team tiebreak. You know, it's, it will go the other way. But the bottom line is, Coach, it's another game, another big one. And, uh, you know, this team bounced back last week, and we come home, and I'm uh, looking forward to it on Senior Day. A bunch of seniors will be honored, and that's really, really important as they play their final game. Well, yeah, and, and uh, actually, Charles, probably, uh, we'd, like I said, we're, we're not going to worry about all that, but you'd actually probably pull Alabama State back into the equation, too, with that. You know what I'm saying? They would probably be the team that would be next because of the division record. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, so at the end of the day, we, we just have to win. We're not worried about all that stuff. All that matters is is uh, just get ready to play. Yeah, talk about the senior group, Coach, before we let you go, because it, it will be their final home game. Um, well, just a great bunch of young men, and they've done so much for Alcorn State University. Hope, hope the fans, the alumni come out to uh, support, uh, you know, everybody and um, push these guys on and, and we need that fan support and we need that we need that 12th man in the stadium to for the swack east championship game all right coach we wish you the best of luck appreciate it charles all right coach jay hobson joining us don't forget next monday night we'll be on the air at six o'clock we'll have all the highlights and we hope the braves will punch that ticket to houston coming up on saturday we'll be on the air at 1 30 a win and the braves are in That'll do it for the Jay Opson Radio Show. Thanks to one and all, Keisha, Cedric Foster, and Willie Jones. For our producer, Jamario Brooks, I'm Charles Edmond. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next Monday night.